So what if I told you that there were a dozen middle school students in Rollo who understood the basics of electrical engineering? A group of college students decided that we wanted to see a more accessible option for educational robotics in our rural schools. So we created Ember Technologies. We prototyped and successfully tested an educational robotics platform and curriculum that would allow students to learn the basics of computer science, electric, electronics, or 3D printing with what little spare time and money college students have. But in just a few months, we were able to take this idea and teach a robotics class at a local homeschool group. Entrepreneurs are a huge force behind our society, technology, and economy. Half of all firms in the United States are considered startups. And startups in technology are responsible for a third of tech-based employment as of 2017. So why shouldn't we encourage students and everyone to be more involved in this? I'm a student and an entrepreneur, and I want to talk about the entrepreneurial spirit, what it can do for our community, and how we can continue to encourage it. So let's start with why students should get involved in entrepreneurship. Even if they don't want to own their own startup after college, it's a great opportunity to learn a whole list of skills from presentations and communications, research and development, and resource management. Few classes can teach that breadth of skills at once. And these skills aren't used just in running your own company, but also in getting an entry-level job. Works well in a team. Communication skills, self-motivated, are all things that employers are actively seeking. So, of course, students should be learning skills in college, but shouldn't they also be learning how they want to apply those skills once they enter the workforce? So what does the school get from encouraging this entrepreneurial spirit? First, more active and motivated students. When students are encouraged to work on what they're passionate about, they're more likely to be engaged in class and more likely to participate in school activities and school groups. The school will also get free publicity, free public outreach, and just from our students going to funding competitions, working within our own community, and partnering with other businesses and organizations. When students are encouraged to work on what they love, the school will have a happier, healthier, more engaged, and more innovative student body. But why should our community spend our precious and sometimes limited community resources focusing on entrepreneurship? I mean, I'll be honest, the current statistic right now is that one in 10 entrepreneurs are successful at the five-year mark. And that's pretty low, but with resources, mentorship, and support from our community, we can increase that rate. And those resulting startups will be able to help our economy and socially help our community. A couple communities, including Douglas, Georgia, have recently been studied by the EPA. They have successfully used entrepreneurs to revitalize their economy. Douglas was able to take its downtown district, which had a vacancy rate of 25%. That means one in four storefronts in their downtown district was vacant. They made it a central hub for small businesses and entrepreneurs, gave them resources through community outreach and government incentives, and were able to bring that rate in 1995 from 25% to 6% in 2012. And between 1995 and 2006, they added 800 new jobs in their downtown district alone. So if Douglas, a town of 11,000 people, can do that with their district, imagine what Rala and our surrounding communities could do if we take advantage of our student entrepreneurs and innovators. Missouri S&T is already working on multiple projects that um, encourage entrepreneurship, such as our i Site program and our technical innovation classes in our economics department. The i Site program takes brainstorming and developing a technical business idea and breaks it down into key components, focusing on the customer and how that product being developed will fit that customer's needs. In just four years, our i Site program hosted at S&T has had 181 teams produced across the state of Missouri. And those teams have gone on to win a total of $2 million in external funding. Another research professor is working to partner our rural communities with our entrepreneurs. The hope is that entrepreneurs will get funding for their projects in exchange for going to these communities, 
and helping them develop resources that will attract more technical entrepreneurs and more small businesses. Imagine what just three or four successful projects could do for our rural economies. Now, as I've said, s and is already working on a couple projects, but we need to continue to encourage and facilitate entrepreneurship on campus and expand these opportunities. We need to show students that the entrepreneurship world is worthwhile and rewarding. For example, who wouldn't want to go to work when you're working on something that you've created? 1.1 million people are currently working for small businesses in Missouri. That's half of our active workforce. And, and small businesses that have 20 or less employees in Missouri added 20,000 net jobs to our workforce in 2015 alone. So Missouri's small businesses are healthy. So shouldn't we encourage our students to take part in this? Now, I'm focusing on the student, because that's where I fit in the ecosystem. But that doesn't mean someone who's mid-career, even retired, can't make a positive impact through entrepreneurship. If you have an idea, I'm going to ask you not to sit on it because you think someone must have already thought of it or it's not new or innovative enough. I want you to think of one crazy idea, whether you're faculty, staff, student, or not related to s and at all. What if that idea were reality? How would our community, Rala, be different? I love the TED slogan, ideas worth spreading. But I want to take that one step further, ideas worth building together. Thank you.